Hey, Amelia, are you free today? Can you do me a favor? Hi, Mom. What's going on? Well, my garden is in a bit of a state at the moment, and I was hoping you could come over and help me take care of it. Oh, I see. What exactly do you need me to do? The weeds are growing like crazy, and I have to go out for a while. Could you please come over and take care of them for me? I would appreciate it if you could finish before I get back. Oh, and if you're on the way to my house, please buy me some fruit. Make sure it's fresh and ripe. Well, I wish I could help you, but I'm feeling very sick today. I don't think I can get out of bed, let alone drive to your house. Again? You haven't been feeling well at all lately. All I've heard lately are excuses about why you can't come and help me. Sorry. If you can't even take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of my son? I bet James doing all the work around the house these days since you're sick all the time. You're not faking it so he does everything, are you? No, Mom. I really haven't been feeling well. Let me educate you on what it takes to be a wife. Sometimes you need to work yourself into exhaustion for your husband and your family. Put your own feelings behind you. Just because you don't feel good doesn't mean you can slack off from your responsibilities. Take some medicine and get over here to pull these weeds. I don't think medicine will make me feel better, Mom. I feel really queasy. I can't leave my couch. I'm not interested in hearing any more excuses, Amelia. Even if your stomach is upset, you need to do it. Suck it up and get over here. Mom, I told you, I'm not coming. If you lived down the street, maybe it would be different. But your house is an hour away. So what? Mom, I don't think I can make it without getting sick. Like I said, I've been in really bad shape lately. From now on, please text James if you need anything. Excuse me? So basically what you're saying is, let James handle it? He's too busy with work. You, on the other hand, just stay at home all day. You have plenty of free time, which is why I ask you. James and I have already talked about this, Mom. Since I haven't been feeling well lately, he told me that I should rest and focus on my health. He said he would take care of everything else. Please understand that. That sounds a bit selfish if you ask me. Sometimes I get sick too, but you never see me take a day off for my responsibilities, do you? Plus, I'm far too busy to waste my time doing things like pulling weeds. Take today, for example. I have my tennis lesson with Camilla. Is that why you won't be home all day? Exactly. My instructor said that I've made a huge improvement in my serve, and that's why Camilla comes with me too. She's trying to have kids as well, and we both pray for her to get pregnant every night before we go to bed. Yeah, but she doesn't need infertility treatments like I do. In fact, the other day she said she heard it's better to rest as much as possible when going through the type of treatment that I'm getting. She knows how hard it is to conceive, and she wants the best for me. Why are you even trying to have kids right now? You should wait until Camilla has them first. Her baby would be way cuter than yours anyway. On second thought, maybe you should stop getting those treatments for now. It's a waste of time and money, or at least until Camilla has her first precious baby. Wow. Mom. That's really hurtful. Oh dear. It's already time for me to leave for tennis. This conversation has gone on longer than expected after hearing all of your pathetic excuses. Anyway, do what you need to do so that you can feel better and get over here to help me around the house. Like I said before, Mom, that's not going to happen. Don't talk back to me, young lady. Do as I say. If you don't turn your attitude around, then maybe it would be best if you came to live with me so that I can teach you how to act like a proper housewife and not to mention teach you some respect. I didn't mean to disrespect you. Poor James. He has such a lazy and selfish wife. You should do your best as a housewife and make him happy. That's your job. You need to change your attitude and be more grateful. Amelia, my mom just texted me and she's complaining about you not coming to clean the house for her. She said that you not only didn't come, but also showed an unpleasant attitude. Is that right? Oh no, not again. She's playing the martyr card. You know how manipulative she can be. I think it's time to break the news to her. She needs to know I'm pregnant. Do you really think so? I'm not sure I want to tell her, but I guess we have to. If we don't say anything, she's going to keep harassing you. You don't have to reply to her when she sends you those nasty messages. I can't just cut her off. She's all alone. What if something happens to her and she needs our help? I understand that, but ever since we tied the knot, She's been asking about you so much more. It would be different if she was polite and respectful, but it seems like she's ordering you around. I think she's just depressed. 
Ever since your dad died, she's changed. That's probably part of it. If I weren't so sick, I'd help her out. Right now, the nausea is unbearable. Maybe when it passes, I could go over and do some chores for her. You're so kind, Amelia. You'd help anyone if you could. We should tell her now so she'll back off a bit. You don't need this stress on top of feeling awful all the time. The only thing you should focus on is our little one and your well-being. You're right. I'm just worried about hurting your sister's feelings. I know she's been trying to conceive too. She'll be happy for us, Amelia. Don't worry about her. They've been struggling, just like we did. They might even start fertility treatment soon. I'm sure she'll be happy for us, but it's still hard to see others get pregnant when you want it so badly but can't. And then there's your mom. She'd flip out if we told her we were having a baby before Camilla. She said she's praying every night for her to get pregnant first. She wants Camilla to give her the first grandchild, not me. I can't believe she said that to you. She's crossed the line this time. Maybe we should just cut her off and never talk to her again. I know you're angry, and I appreciate you standing up for me. But you know she won't let go that easily. She knows where we live, James. She'll show up at our door and cause a scene. Or she'll keep calling and texting you, trying to guilt trip you into seeing her. And then she'll be even nastier to me when you're not around. You know I'm the one who has to deal with her most of the time. Mmm, yeah, you're right. Sorry, that was a stupid idea. No, it's not a stupid idea. It's sweet that you want to protect me. Most husbands wouldn't dare to confront their own mother for their wife's sake. I'm so lucky to have you. I just wish we could all get along, you know? Unfortunately, I think we're past that. She's too stubborn and set in her ways. We've tried everything, but nothing works. I hope she doesn't take it out on Camilla for not having a baby before us. Who knows what she'll do? She's unpredictable and irrational. Yeah, I guess so. I just wish it didn't have to be like this. Trust me, I would love for everyone to get along. That's not up to us, though. The ball is in her court, and it doesn't seem like she wants to change her behavior. You're too good of a person to say anything. I'll take care of her from now on. I was also thinking... Maybe it's best we move once the kid is here? As it is right now, she's working you like a slave. Yeah, I suppose that would keep her away from us. Exactly! And you know what? I think we should move sooner rather than later. We don't want to deal with the hassle of moving when you're about to pop. And we could use a bigger place for the baby anyway. I'll check out some listings online tonight and see what I can find. I'll also give her a call soon and let her know what's going on. I'm not ready to cut her off completely, but this is her last chance to shape up or ship out. Okay. Thank you for doing this, James. I'm sorry that you have to go through this because of me. Hey, don't be sorry. This is not your fault at all. This is my mom's issue, not yours, and I'm going to sort it out once and for all. Trust me, okay? You don't need this kind of stress in your life right now. You need to focus on yourself and the baby. That's the most important thing. Are you sure you want to tell her? Maybe it would be better if we told her together. Don't you think she'll get mad and blame you for everything? Let her get mad and blame me. I don't care anymore. I'm not going to let her ruin this for us, Amelia. This is supposed to be a happy time for us, remember? We're having a baby. A beautiful baby that we made together. And I'm not going to let anyone or anything spoil that for us. Especially not my mom. Thank you so much, James. You're amazing. I love you. I love you too, babe. More than anything. And I'm going to protect you and our baby from anyone who tries to hurt you, even if it's my mom. You're so sweet. Thank you for being so supportive and understanding. Of course, babe. Anything for you and our baby. Aw, you're the best. <laughs> Don't work too hard, okay? You're going to need all your strength for your showdown with your mom. Amelia, can we talk for a minute? Good morning, Mom. How are you doing? I just found out from James. You're pregnant! And you didn't tell me? Yes, I'm pregnant. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I was waiting for the right time. It's okay. I understand. The first trimester is really hard. You must have been feeling sick and tired all the time. Well, it hasn't been easy. I know, honey. And I'm sorry for being so mean to you lately. Especially about wanting Camilla to have a baby before you. That was wrong of me. But when I heard you were pregnant, I was overjoyed. I didn't care who gave me my first grandchild. 
as long as it was healthy and happy. I've been doing some soul searching this past week, and I realize I've been treating you unfairly, and I want to apologize and congratulate you on your pregnancy. Wow, Mom. That's very kind and generous of you. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. You're welcome, sweetheart. You deserve it. And I have a small favor to ask you. It's not because I'm trying to butter you up or anything. I really need your help. Oh, sure. What is it? Is everything okay? Well, actually, I have to go to the hospital. What? Why? Are you sick? No, no, nothing like that. I just broke a bone in my leg. Well, technically, it's a hairline fracture. Oh, no! How did that happen? You must be in so much pain! It's karma, is what it is. Karma for being such a witch to you lately. At my age, it's not as simple as putting on a cast and walking it off. I might need to stay in the hospital for a while. And I hate to ask you this when you're already dealing with pregnancy symptoms. But could you please bring me some things to the hospital for me? I don't have time to pack everything before I leave. And it's too much for me to handle right now. Of course, Mom. I'm feeling okay today, actually. When do you need me to come? Really? You're a lifesaver. Could you come by this afternoon? Sure, no problem. But just in case I start feeling sick again, I might have to call James and ask him to bring everything for me. No! Don't tell him anything! What? Why not? Because we're not on speaking terms right now. We had a huge fight over the phone yesterday. He said some things that really hurt me. And I don't think he'll help me even if you ask him nicely. Oh wow. I had no idea. But don't you think he'll be concerned if he finds out you're in the hospital? No, he won't care. He'll probably be glad that I'm out of his hair for a while. Mom, that's not true. He loves you, even if he doesn't always show it. Well, he has a funny way of showing it then. So don't tell him or Camilla anything about this. Promise me. Mom, I don't know. This sounds serious. Maybe we should let them know what's going on. They might want to help. No, trust me, they won't. They'll only make things worse. The only thing I need from you is to bring me some stuff to the hospital. After that, the doctors and nurses will take care of me, and I won't bother you again. Mom, are you sure? This doesn't sound like a good idea. Yes, 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 I'm sure. Don't worry about me. I'm tough as nails. A broken bone won't stop me. It's not like I have cancer or something. Just bring me what I need and then leave me alone. Don't worry. Okay, if that's what you want. Send me a list of what you want me to bring and where to find it in your house. And tell me which hospital you're going to and what room number you'll be in. I'll get everything together and bring it over to you later. If I suddenly start to feel sick, I'll let you know and we can figure out what to do. Thanks a bunch. You're the best daughter-in-law ever. I'll text you everything as soon as I can. Amelia, how long are you going to hide from me? You are a two-faced person. I can't contact James either. What's the matter with you guys? Ugh! Oh, hello, Mom. How's your leg? Broken! I've been waiting for you at the hospital this whole time. No, you haven't. I know you're lying. In case you forgot, our intercom has a camera. You seem to be standing just fine. My leg didn't hurt that much that day. Unbelievable! What's the big idea? I should be asking you that. Why did you call me down to the hospital where you weren't actually staying? What type of horrible plan did you have for me and my child? What nonsense are you talking about? Or are you intentionally accusing me just because I treated you badly in the past? Wendy, enough with this victim mentality. It's a shame you didn't pursue a career in Hollywood. The other day, I received a strange text from Camilla's husband. He mentioned that you went to their place and asked to use their printer. When he checked what you were printing, it turned out to be a list of things harmful to pregnant women. Oh, I guess the jig is up. My plan was so close to being a success. What's that supposed to mean? You know, if you harmed me or my baby, that would make you a criminal. What were you planning? Something that was far better than having a pathetic, worthless woman give birth to my grandchild. You just had to go and get knocked up before Camilla, didn't you? Do you have any idea how much energy I put into making sure Camilla had her baby first? And yet God answers your prayers instead of mine. If you were a decent person, you would have waited until she was pregnant first. Camilla thinks the complete opposite. She was ecstatic that I finally got pregnant. I doubt that. Every time her every time her time of the month came, she was always so down and gloomy that she'd have to try it again to get pregnant. Probably because she didn't want any more pressure from you. She wanted it to be over just as much as she wanted to actually have a kid. She told me it was a nightmare dealing with you. She said you'd come banging on her door every month to check and see if she was pregnant yet. 
She and I are always on the same page for everything. When I told her to get good grades in school, that's what she did. When I told her what university I wanted her to go to, she applied only there and got accepted. Before she graduated, I told her what kind of job I wanted her to get, and that's the type of job she found. She did get married a little bit later than I liked, but oh well. She only listened to you because she knew you'd make her life miserable if she didn't. She didn't have the energy to keep fighting back. She resents you for controlling her life so much. What do you know? She's not like James. She willingly listens to what I tell her. She just pretended to be happy about your pregnancy because she's nice. She probably seemed happy on the surface, but was dying on the inside. I know my daughter better than anyone. <laughs> oh, do you? Because she told me she's actually given up on having children. What? She told me to tell you that. She also said that she doesn't want anything to do with you anymore. What are you talking about? I just saw her last week. By saw her, you mean you showed up at her place after dinner and demanded to be let in, right? Did she really say she doesn't want kids anymore? Is that true? Yeah, it is. She said she was scared to bring a child into this world if you were going to be its grandmother. That's ridiculous. She's been holding it in for a while, but she's reached her breaking point. She was appalled and disgusted when she heard you were going to try and do something to harm me and my baby. That's what pushed her over the edge. She said she never wanted to see you again. Hang on. This can't be happening. None of my calls to her are going through. She's probably pressing ignore when you call, or she just blocked your number. Whatever. I'll just go talk face to face with her. You could try, but I don't think you'll have much luck. They moved to a new apartment yesterday. What? How do you know that? Because she asked me to help her pack and move. She said she wanted a fresh start, away from you and your toxic influence. You're lying through your teeth. You're trying to turn her against me because you're jealous of our bond. No, I'm not. You're the one who's lying to yourself. You don't have a bond with her, you have a leash. You've been treating her like a puppet, not a daughter. How dare you talk to me like that? You don't know anything about me or my daughter. You're just a selfish, ungrateful, manipulative woman who's trying to ruin our family. How could she after everything I've done for her? I let her down the path to success. It sounds like that's just what you wanted her to do, not what she actually wanted. It was all for her. I lost my mother at a really young age. When I got married, I was so excited to technically gain a mother again. Even if it was just a mother-in-law, more than anything, I wanted to have a good relationship with you. Boy, I was such an idiot for thinking that. Now I don't want anything to do with a psycho like you. Who are you calling a psycho, you little witch? You, you psycho. Or maybe you'd like it if I called you human garbage instead. James and I are taking a page out of Camilla's book. We don't want to have anything to do with you ever again. We don't need anyone that would even think about, let alone be ready to harm our child. Did you move too? Where are you? I'm coming to find you. Oh, <laughs> did you show up at our old apartment? Like I said, you're a psycho. I'd rather die than tell you where we are. Let's just say it's far away from you. This is the last time I'm ever going to be in contact with you. Hang on. If Camilla isn't having kids, I don't care. I'll spoil your child instead of hers. So stop saying you're going to cut me out of your lives and move back into your old place. I don't care if you give this kid one million dollars. You're not coming near us. But why? Are you that stupid? Because you're a lunatic. We're never going back there and we're never seeing you again. Where did I go wrong? All of my children are abandoning me. At least you got that part right. I talked with Camilla before we both decided to move. We knew that if only one of us moved away, it would make the other's life harder because of you. That's why we decided to leave at the same time. This is how my children repay me for giving them everything. I think we've all done more than enough for you. Especially James and Camilla. They've been sending you money, haven't they? This isn't just about money. Oh, I know that. It would have been much simpler if it were only about money. We've learned from our mistakes, and James and I now have an example to teach our child about what kind of person not to become in the future. Not to mention, you've taught me what not to do as a mother. Just hang on! Maybe you should rethink things before you do something you'll regret later. I really have thought about what I've done. I can't stand the thought of being on my own. There's nothing I care less about than you struggling to survive on your own. Don't come near my family or Camilla's ever again. No, I don't want to be on my own! I want my family. The only excitement I had was waiting for my first grandchild. I have nothing left to live for if I can't see my grandchild. What are you saying? You always have your tennis lessons to look forward to. Once your fake injury heals, I'm sure you'll be back out on the court in no time. I don't care about tennis. Well then, I guess you really are out of luck then. Don't you think it's a little ironic? After all that energy you put into tennis, in the end, you're the one who got served. After hitting rock bottom, my mother-in-law accepted the harsh reality of being abandoned by her family. 
There were suspicions that she might have planned to harm me physically to cause a miscarriage, making it look like an accident. However, this is just speculation, and we can't be sure of her intentions. She turned to fortune telling, spending most of her savings, desperately trying to win her family back, but failed to do so. Her attempts to borrow money from relatives were fruitless, and now she's struggling to repay her debts. Meanwhile, I gave birth to our beautiful son, and life has settled down. Camilla's stance on having kids changed after the pressure from her mother disappeared. We talked and decided to try again, leading to a successful pregnancy. She's now seven months along and feeling both nervous and excited about becoming a mother. In a way, I'm grateful for my mother-in-law's extreme behavior, as it brought happiness to both families. I'm determined to be the best mother to my son, making sure he has the best life possible, in contrast to what my mother-in-law did. Hey mom, I'm sorry I wasn't able to take out my phone at work today. It was really hectic all day. Did something happen? You finally answered! Do you have any idea how long I've been waiting to hear back from you? I'm sorry, I can't use my phone at work. Fine, whatever. Laura, I went by your place in the afternoon. Your laundry was out drying. Care to explain yourself? The weather was nice, so I figured I'd hang dry them today. They say it's much better for clothes than putting them in the dryer. That's not what I'm talking about. Matt's shirts were covered in wrinkles. Do you even know how to dry your clothes properly? There's not much I can do about that. They're actually supposed to have wrinkles. The type of fabric they're made of makes it look wrinkled on purpose. Wrinkly fabric? What? You're having Matt wear trashy shirts like those? Hey, Matt picked them out himself. It's not like I picked them out. That's enough excuses. Go get him some proper shirts. Oh, okay. Sure, will do. Oh, that reminds me about the dinner you made the other day. Do you have any idea what salt and pepper are? It was like I was eating the air. It had no flavor at all. Huh? But Dad said it was delicious. Plus, it's Matt's favorite food. Ugh, do you not even know what flattery is? I'll say what everyone else won't say. It tasted about as dull as hospital food. I'm not a sick person. Put some real flavor in there. I'll keep that in mind. You've been married to Matt three years already, right? One of these days, you need to learn my style of cooking. Maybe you should get some proper training. Training? I'm saying that you need to come here so that I can teach you how this family cooks. What a blessing that would be. Let's do it starting tomorrow. Sorry, but I have work tomorrow. Well then, the day after tomorrow. I have work that day as well. Seriously? You keep working and working, but you barely make any money. Why don't you save working until you can figure out how to be a proper housewife first? Well, that would be nice, but I wanted to save some money before I have kids. Worry about money after you've had them. You haven't even had one kid. Aren't your priorities a little off? You can't do laundry, you can't cook, and you can't even have a child. You have to be a good wife before you can start thinking about being a good mother. You don't have to say stuff like that. Then start doing what you're supposed to, huh? That's right. You take the day off on Sundays, right? Let's start your housewife training next Sunday. Okay. Oh, also, when you're on your way to the house, could you pick up a lottery ticket? Actually, 30 tickets would be best. Apparently, people always hit at least a few numbers when they buy from that lottery place. Yeah, I heard that too recently. You should try buying some, too. If you hit the lottery, your whole life would be flipped around. I don't think I'm that lucky, unfortunately. Well, even better then. You can use this as a chance to turn your look around. Maybe God will give a good-for-nothing woman like you a chance. <laughs> I'll think about it. Just don't forget about my tickets, at least. Since I'm going out of my way to teach you cooking, the ticket cost will be on you, okay?
Laura, are you at home yet? I've been trying to reach you for a while now. Yes, I just got back. Sorry, I didn't see your messages earlier. Well, then you should have texted me right away. Thank you so much for teaching me your cooking ways today. Those are the kind of things you should be sending me. Sorry, I said it when I left the house, so I didn't think that would be necessary. But thank you again for teaching me how to cook today. Ugh, you really have a long way to go as a wife. You know what? I'll give you some homework ahead of time. Homework? What do you mean? Yep. If it's just in your head, you'll forget it right after I teach it to you. I want you to get a notebook by next lesson. Then write everything you learned today and turn it into me. You should also write down some points of reflection. Not just reflection about cooking, but about the things I warned you about as a wife. Oh, yeah. Got it. You're getting it wrong again. That's where you say, thank you for your guidance, master. I want you to write that down too. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, also, I forgot to ask you this earlier. Why won't you get pregnant? Uh, it's just a luck and timing thing, really. I don't know. I think it's a blessing for the time being. Is that really all? What are you trying to say? Be honest with me. Don't blame another thing on that bad luck of yours. You're not infertile, are you? I don't think that's it. But I do go to the gynecologist regularly. Hmm, something's not right. I read this in a magazine the other day. But isn't it harder to get pregnant when you're sick? Maybe you have an STD or something. What? Don't even joke around about that. I'm perfectly healthy. Cut it out. I'm not too sure about that. Since you don't have much for brains, your face is all you've got. Before you met Matt, you were fooling around a lot, weren't you? You're not seeing some other guy from work, are you? Don't say those kinds of things just based on my appearance. Could you please not be so mean to me? I don't do things like that. I don't know what type of person you think I am, but you're not right. It's not like it's that rare for a housewife to have an affair. I read about it online all the time. I hear it happens a lot these days. And you know, the divorce rate in this country is totally ridiculous. Please stop. I would never do something like that. Stop making all these assumptions about me. You're completely wrong. I'm sorry. I was just asking because I got worried. It's not like I'm bullying you or anything. Don't get the wrong idea. If you say so. I didn't really want to ask anyway. But, you know, it's a little lonely not having a grandchild yet. Everyone's always proudly showing me pictures of their grandchildren. I have nothing to show them in return. Even still, you don't need to ask me things like that. We're going to have kids when we're ready. We've talked about it before. I bet you have. But maybe you should bring it up again. I'm not getting any younger, you know. Before I leave this world, I'd like to hold my grandchild in my arms. If you're not going to get pregnant, then you should go get an examination at the hospital. Maybe think about getting infertility treatment. I understand. I'll talk about all this again with Matt. Now you're speaking my language. He might understand the real reason why you won't have kids. <laughs> Laura, are you done with work yet? Don't work too hard. You've got to save some energy for this Sunday's wife class. Hi, Mom. What's up? Well, actually, I wanted to apologize to you. I said a bunch of mean things the other day. Matt got really mad at me and even went as far as saying he wouldn't talk to me anymore. I'm really regretting it. Oh, don't worry about it. You apologized the other day. He said from now on, he'll at least do bare minimum communication. So don't worry about it. Thank you. To have such an open-hearted daughter makes me truly happy. Even so, I really am cruel. Mom, what's up with you? You're acting really different. I'm telling you, it's fine. If there's nothing else you need, I'm going to go make dinner. Excuse me. Wait a second. There is something, actually. 
What is it? You know those lottery tickets I had you buy? You said you bought them, right? Yes. I went and got just one. Yeah, about that. The last thing Matt said to me was that you actually won a lot of money from it. You know, since we're so close, I was wondering if you could lend me some money. Like maybe 23000 or so? I'm actually in some debt myself. <laughs> I knew it! There's no way you'd be that nice to me without having a reason. Sorry though, I already spent it all. <laughs> so, I'm not going to be lending you anything. What? You spent all of it? No way! How was that possible? I used it all the other day with Matt and your husband. Why? Why was I not a part of that? We had a talk about your bullying, including your husband. I have been really down lately, after how much you've been bullying me. So after I won, we headed out and spent it all to cheer me up. But to spend it all? That's impossible! What in the world did you buy? I'm going to sell whatever my husband bought. Um, Mom, how much do you think I won? The prize was huge! So it has to be more than $75,000, right? Were you not talking to the neighbors about wanting to buy a house with it? So it has to be enough to put a down payment for a house with, no? You've got the wrong idea. We were just choking when we said that. What I won was about $390. $390? Yep. So the three of us went through all that money in a fancy steak place. Huh? Only 390 bucks? Don't say such misleading things. Otherwise, people will get the wrong idea. You're the one who got it wrong, are you not? I never said anything about winning the jackpot. Just that I won money. Plus, even if I won that big prize, I wouldn't lend any of it to you. I don't have an obligation to. And honestly, I wouldn't even lend you a quarter after the way you've treated me. You're talking pretty big for someone who only won a few hundred bucks. I figured if you'd won the big prize, you were the kind of daughter that would give me at least some, but I guess not. Oh, I wasted my time trying to be nice to you. You're useless to me. You have no right to say that. That's enough. I don't see any reason why I should associate myself with someone as useless as you. From now on, don't contact me anymore. I don't ever want to see your face again. What in the world have you done? I can't believe you told my husband about my debt. All I did was tell Matt what you told me. Hey, you said you would never speak this way to me again, but you've already broken your promise. What made you think he wouldn't find out about that eventually? I was keeping it a secret from him. He would have never known it if it weren't for you. Now that he knows, he's going to divorce me for sure. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> Who knows? I guess it just slipped. It's not like I was forbidden from saying it or anything. You would have understood if you just thought about it for a second. I guess I'm a terrible wife. Sorry. <laughs> but I hear this is your second time being in debt. Isn't that right? You promised him that you would sign the divorce papers if you got in debt again. So it's your fault. It's not my fault. I had no choice. I needed money. Needed or wanted? There's a big difference. You used loan money to support a certain young man, right? You donated to a live streamer, am I wrong? You were the one looking for men online, so this is all your fault, really? <laughs> Why do you know about that? Dad handed over the laptop you were using. He said there were no expensive brand items in the house and asked if I could look into it. He said he'd been staying up late into the night, looking at the computer, and he thought it was suspicious. It wasn't anything bad, so it's fine, right? I was purely just supporting him, that's all. That's how those people make their living. I just can't see how that alone would put you in debt. It blows my mind. It might have been fine if you were working somewhere and spending your own money, but... I'm not raising children anymore, so I'm just doing what I should as a housewife. I'm not interested in being told off by some good-for-nothing woman like you. I'm not speaking ill of your hobby, but getting caught up in debt, keeping a secret from your husband, that is a problem. We're going to fully work together with Dad, 
so don't expect any help from us. Wait, how about this? Why don't you tell him to reconsider the divorce? If you do, then I'll forgive you. You'll forgive me? No, I'm okay. Whether or not you and him get divorced is nothing to do with me. Considering how much you've harassed me until now, I don't care what happens to you. Why? I've done so much for your sake, have I not? I go out of my way every day to walk by your place and make sure things are okay. I even taught you how to cook. Have you ever heard of unwelcomed kindness? Neither Matt nor I asked for it. I never wanted to have you teach me cooking, especially since you were so arrogant and bossy about it. You're really doing all of that stuff to hang it over our heads. I'm not stupid. Your mother-in-law is someone you should cherish. How can you say things like this? Didn't your parents raise you right? If you want to be cherished, then become someone worth cherishing. You're my husband's mother, so I speak with you when I have to. But as far as I'm concerned, we're strangers. You think you suddenly become important to me just because we became family? Have you ever treated me like I was important to you? I have been! Is that so? Well, that's news to me, since I've never even felt that a single time. As I thought, there's no way I can get along with you. Okay, okay. From now on, I'll work hard to be a good mother-in-law. I won't say anything mean to you, so please just help me out this one time. If you could just tell him that I want him to reconsider our divorce, that would be enough. You broke your promise to him to never borrow money again. You also broke your promise to never speak ill to your daughter-in-law again. How can I believe anything you say? Because I'll give a proper apology. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I regret what I've done so much. Just saying that is easy. With my husband casting me away, I can't go on living. When I got into debt before, I promised that if it happened again, I'd even waive my share of our property. It's still in writing. What kind of a respectable wife makes the same mistake again, even after being in so deep? There's nothing I can do for you. You're completely on your own to face the consequences of your own mistakes. So please don't contact me again. After this, Matt's going to block your number so you won't be able to talk to him either. Wait, I'm begging you. Listen to what I'm saying. Oh, there was something I wanted to tell you. What? Tell me anything. I'll listen to whatever you have to say. I got pregnant. Wow, that's incredible. Congratulations. If that's the case, all the more reason for me to stay with my husband. No, I think this happened because we knew we'd be parting ways with you. Actually, ever since I bought that lottery ticket, nothing but good things have happened. I think God gave me a chance to turn my luck around. What are you trying to say? The reason for my bad luck all along was you. So stay out of my life from now on. I'm finally happy now. My in-law's marriage ended in a bitter divorce after my mother-in-law's gambling addiction came to light. She had no choice but to leave the house, since she had signed a written statement when she borrowed money from my father-in-law. He had enough evidence to prove her fault and get rid of her quickly. I felt sorry for him, but I also admired his courage and dignity. He was such a gentle and kind man, and he deserved better than a woman who lied, cheated, and wasted his hard-earned money. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, was left with nothing but debts and regrets. She had no place to go, no one to help her, and no way to pay back what she owed. She was desperate and furious, and she blamed us for her misfortune. She tried to barge into our house one day, hoping to find some valuables or money to steal, but she was in for a surprise. We had moved out of that house while she was busy with a divorce. We had bought a new house with the lottery money that I won, thanks to her ironic suggestion. She didn't know that we had moved, so she broke into the wrong house. The new owners were shocked and scared by her intrusion, and they called the police right away. She was arrested for trespassing and burglary, and she had to face the consequences of her actions. She called us later, begging us to bail her out and be her guarantors. But we refused, of course. We wanted nothing to do with her anymore. We didn't know what happened to her after that, and we didn't care. We were happy with our new life, and we didn't need her negativity and drama. My father-in-law sold his house too, and moved into a nice condo near our neighborhood. He was happy for us, 
and he was excited to become a grandfather. He often visited us and helped us with chores and cooking. He was such a nice father-in-law, and I loved him like my own dad. Now that my source of stress was gone, I focused on raising a child with my precious family. I didn't have any good memories from my time with my mother-in-law, but I was grateful that she recommended me to buy that lottery ticket. It was the best thing she ever did for me.